Hey world, welcome back to another episode of the Top Farms. I've been bit up and chewed up by uh, ants out here. Uh, we finished this bed off. Yeah, even though the compost isn't quite ready, we use the uh, from the compost pile. We use to make the bottom bottom layer because uh, eventually it'll be nice and composted down there, and it'll be a material down there that'll be nice and aerated for the uh, for these uh, plants to move along down there. Of course. We got underneath the raised bed, we have plastic. So basically back here, we want, we're gonna do, eventually all of this is gonna be raised beds with plastic underneath. So it'll be good to grow our greens back here, but as far as corn and anything like that, you see we have some corn in the ground over here, but this will be the last time that we plant corn back here in this area. It'll all be for greens and stuff like that. And uh, as you see, we got the bed pretty, pretty full. Um, it's not all the way to the top, but uh, we got eight, eight, uh, eight bucket loads of soil in this uh, one raised bed, and uh, three, four bags of uh, compost and two bags of topsoil in here, and it's still not filled all the way to the top. So it takes quite a bit of soil to fill up a raised bed. When you step on it, though, it, it's nice and springy. But the main thing right now that I'm getting ready to do as I'm getting ready to sow. So you can see how much 500 seeds, it, uh, how much and how much volume 500 seeds take up. Now, it's, if you hear 500 seeds, it might sound like a lot, but it really isn't. And uh, back here, the way, that, the way that I'm gonna be doing it back here is I'm not gonna be playing in any kind of order or, you know, it's gonna be just put the seeds down, no measurements. And I don't think it's gonna take up a lot of space either. So get a look at what, what uh, the seeds look like. And uh, so you don't even, to do it efficiently, you don't even really have to count the seeds. You just grab a pinch and put them in the ground. And that's my method of doing it. I think it's a good method. Mm -hmm. Grab a pinch and then put them in the ground. You know? Take the time to make sure there's plenty of soil in here. So they got a good long ways to the bottom. Yeah. So it's like uh, growing up on superfoods. This food is on superfood uh, because it's all good soil in here. All nice organic material. And, uh, yeah. It's got a few. Uh, creatures in here, creepy crawlers in here, you know, of course that comes with uh, gathering material from uh, just the soil, you're going to have a few creepy crawlers and we have a few creepy crawlers in here, but um, it's not so bad, I mean, it's not like it's an infestation in here, you know, a few creepy crawlers actually isn't bad for the operation, it's not bad to have few creepy crawlers in there to aerate the soil. It's only when you have them in there to the extent where they're trying to uh, eat up all of your uh, crops. That's when you have a problem with having a few ants in here and a few little worms in here and a few little this and a few little that. So baby, tell the story. Mm -hmm. See what you had going on today. Same thing like always. So what's that? Clean. Clean. Mm-hmm. Camera don't know what you got going on. Mm -hmm. Let the camera what you got going on. It might be interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't think me cleaning is it. hearing the story about me cleaning is interesting. Why is the story about the cleaning not interesting? Because who wants to hear a story about me cleaning? Somebody might want to hear. Hey, mm -hmm. you know. While you're on the farm and I'm out here, they might be like, what is this wife doing all day? Well, that's you what know, I do all day. Every time they shoot a video, it's always him talking. She's never representing. Woo -woo. <laughs> and so somebody might be interested in what you have going on. Mm -hmm. I don't got much going on. I can tell you all that. I just clean, clean, clean. Find something to clean, update uh, social medias. Oh, so when they see social media... Who's uh, 
Who's posting it? Me. When they watch this video, who's posting it? Me. Oh, okay. Somebody might want to know it. I do that. I'm on the phone talking to certain people about our business. What's the telephone number? Our telephone number? Yeah. Our telephone number is 334-896-4032. And that's the number to reach Top Farms? That's the number to reach Top Farms. Okay. okay so we do have a business line. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and there you go. If you would like to speak with us or schedule an appointment to come out here, there you go. You have the number now. Mm -hmm. You can call us. Uh, you know, on the internet, some people, you know, they like to harass people and stuff like that. You put out your number and stuff so people can do business with you. And uh, there'll be some people who have too much time on their hands or, you know, I don't know what's, what, what it is. But uh, instead of calling to do business with you, they'll call and harass you. Mm -hmm. The funny thing to me about people like that is, you know, let's say for, I'll, I'll speak in a, a terminology that people know, like, because a lot of people have hip hop artists out there and uh, they're constantly bashing them and constantly harassing them, but you don't, they don't know these people. These people never did anything to you, never did nothing to you. They're just uh, living their life, doing what they're supposed to do. They're entertaining people. Although you might not be entertained by their form of music or whatever, you know, but to, but to then turn around and go harass those people, you know, there's got to be something wrong with you. You got to have a serious problem to harass somebody who's who's trying to work and handle business and provide for themselves and for, them fa for their families. Don't you feel that way, baby? Yeah. Yeah. But... If you've never been to a farm before and you would like to come visit, we just said our number. If you're in the lower Alabama area, we are uh, open to the public. Our farm is open to the public. Matter of fact, we welcome visitors. A lot of times we have visitors and uh, we say, oh, we're going to shoot a video, but it never gets shot, right? But mm -hmm. <laughs> the video never gets made. Mm -hmm. So we're very welcome to people. We want to show people uh, what we do and our practices because we feel like there is no such thing as competition yeah. in business. It's not a competition. It's uh, you create your niche, your market, you come learn something from us. And I'm happy that you just are interested in learning. You know, mm -hmm. That's my thing. I'm just happy when people are interested in learning about, about farming. Of course, you know, everybody I've seen, you know, urban farmers, we're urban farmers. And uh, <laughs> all the urban farmers have their own techniques and their own little things that they like to do. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. You want to give, you know, your small farm personality. That's the thing I say about small farms. If you're a small farm, you shouldn't be trying to do the same things as big farm. You should be trying to add a little bit of personal touch to what you do. Uh, something that makes you unique and will give people not only experience of purchasing your food but giving them an insight into how you think what you like what you enjoy about farming of course there's not very many farmers out there there's not even a lot of people who do uh, small gardens there's a lot of elderly people we still do the small gardens. So for a younger generation, we're glad that we can be the ones to show you what this farming is all about. And maybe you will find value in what we do and want to do the same thing. Try to, try to get you a small operation going on. Whether that be two or three acres, a half an acre, a tenth of an acre, whatever that may be. Let's get out and plant something, put something in the ground, watch it grow. And uh, from there, you know, here's a little creepy crawly. Come look, baby, come show him. There's one creeping, you're gonna miss it. Oh, he's going in the ground.
Look at that little creepy crawly right there. Mm. I don't know if he now, he'll eat meat. I don't know if you can. The resolution is good enough to get him. Yeah. But uh, that little creepy crawly right there is a meat eater. So all the other little pests, he'll be eating at them. He might get him some food if he can't. Some of the food we plant if he can't find anything to eat. Mm -hmm. But he eats bugs. He likes meat. Also, those things are... Uh, are poisonous to an extent. And what I've been told, don't get bit by one. It's not a very good, not a very good feeling to get bit by one of those jokers. And there we go. Those are all the sorrow seeds. Now I gotta go grab a flag. Just rusting away. Mm -hmm. Just so I know where I ended that first row. Just like that. Now, it's on to the dun dun dun, dun collard green. As you can see, what type of seeds are we using? Non GMO. We're using organic seeds. You pay a little bit more for the seeds, but you know you're getting real food. That was a seed that was derived from real collard greens. So that was all the sorrow? That's it. Oh, wow. I thought when you started, uh, when you went into your pocket, I thought that was the collard. So I was like, I only took up half of the box. Yeah, that was it. Wow. We got a half a box done. But that half a box. Uh, you saw how I planted. It's going to provide lots and lots of food. Mm -hmm. It's going to provide food for not only for us to eat, but for other people to eat as well. So that's why I'm saying we are a service to the world. Mm -hmm. Well, to our small little area, or to anybody who wants to uh, anybody who wants to do business with us, we are a service to you because we're planting enough food. Not just for ourselves, even with that small one bag of sorrow, there will be enough to share. Mm -hmm. Not just for us to eat, but for somebody else to eat. Now these are how small the uh, collard green seeds are. They're pretty small, but at the same time, comparative to other seeds, they're pretty big. I'm actually looking at them. And with these in about this size, then you do have to sort of keep watching how many you grab. The most I would recommend you grab with a seed this size is three seeds into a hole that would be like what you would do so as you can see i just scooped it out and it was three seeds and that's what you would put into a hole that's because you know you might not have one seed germinate and the other one will you know but sometimes you'll have two of the three seeds germinate and uh they'll be growing in that small little space but it's all right We're, we want them to grow in a small space so we can uh, just like we're planting them with uh, with no uh, set pattern. We're gonna come back and just be picking, picking and picking, picking and picking and picking, right? Mm -hmm. We're coming to pick them the same way. Yep. So you know, I don't think we'll fill this whole box up. We'll plant something else down at the bottom half of this box. But it's enough, right, babe? Mm-hmm. It's enough to uh, for us to have some to eat and for us to be able to bring some to other people to eat as well. Right? Mm-hmm. Because this is the whole point of this is, uh, you know, we want to make everybody food, good, good, healthy food accessible to everybody. And our way of doing that, because... We might can't charge the lowest price in the world. We won't be able to get lower than the lowest price in the world. So that's not how we're going to do it. We're going to do it by accepting food stamps and by accepting food vouchers. So it doesn't, even though you have to pay a little bit more than what you would pay at Walmart, it's still not going to hurt your pockets to be able to eat good. Mm -hmm. 
Right, baby? Yeah. Because everybody deserves the opportunity to eat here. Mm-hmm. You know, as I'm putting in this these seeds, I'm noticing that this box has good depth to it. You did a really good job of filling this box up. There's plenty of room for these seeds to grow. Mm -hmm. Plenty of depth to put them in the ground. This is all all around good effort. Is the soil still wet? Uh, not really wet. Moist. I'm gonna soak it down though. Give it a little five minute soak. Okay. Uh, and put so so some fertilizer can get down in there. Mm -hmm. When you're finished um, planting and finish planting, uh, spraying the stuff on it, we need to get to city hall. Oh yeah, that's right. On um, Fridays we have a uh, a meeting. We attend meetings with the uh, county clerk every Friday. Um, cost of doing business, keep the city updated on uh, what we're doing, what some certifications we have, you know. It's always good to stay on top of that stuff if you're doing business. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not farming as a business, then you don't have to worry about that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. If you're just doing a little backyard operation, hush-hush operation, mm -hmm. which I do recommend most people do, but, you know, we're trying to do it on a little bit i can't say a larger scale but what we're trying to accomplish might be larger we can't do a little hush hush operation for what we want to do can we lover mm -mm. so what i do recommend for somebody just growing a little something in their backyard do your little hush hush operation would you recommend that baby yeah let stuff to grow go through Mm -hmm. that's people that's people you have to involve in your business you know the way we're doing it we have all kinds of people involved in our business and uh it's not bad it uh makes you do things the, the right way but uh a lot of times these same people uh that you have to involve they don't want to really help you they're trying to find ways to disqualify you and cost you money Mm -hmm. Right, baby? Yep. That's that's what we found. So, With that being said, I think if you're not going to be doing all-out business, uh, you're uh, going to grow your food and you know the people that, well, you know, you just want to have grow just enough for yourself and maybe a few friends and family members to make a little bit of extra cash, I don't recommend going through all the hassle. You know, now that we're taking the steps, but the one thing taking all the proper steps has done for us is, you know, it's got me back in going to school mode because I have to go to all these classes. Uh, it's got me back into, hey, when the, when I'm done with all these classes and uh, it's time for me to get other certifications and stuff, I'm just going to go back to college and get, get a degree, I think, in agriculture. I think uh, since we started farming, I've been having to go to classes every week, every week. And it's not even going to end till uh, June 25th. June 25th. And then I'm going to start the next cycle to become a master gardener. And then when that's, while that's going on, I think I'm going to go see what all kind of grants or scholarships I can get to go to school for, for a degree in agriculture. I think that's a good path for me because I spend so much time out here. I have a bond with what I do out here. I have a, I'm very, very invested in things out here. I'm not so much concerned with the business, the business stuff. That's what my wife to be concerned with. But the actual out here and being close with my food, I've become very, very, very attached to what I do. I'm very invested in what I do out here. And so as you can see, when you see something about a big farm and how they work, they're not going to get down here on their hands and put their hands and put no seeds in the ground. All right, baby. Mm -mm. They, got a, they got a sprayer. Mm -hmm. They spray the seeds. The seeds are GMO seeds, so they don't have to worry about is uh, some going to come eat their seeds. An animal eat their seeds, the animal likely to die. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't worried about what animal eats the seed. You're almost at 20 minutes. Whew, we make good long videos. Well, I don't know how much information we were able to put out. 
but uh, we do have a Facebook page. It's up and going. And uh, tell them the Facebook page, baby. A L A Top Farms. Okay, that's our Facebook page. Also, if you enjoy seeing our videos, if you sat around, watched this video, and uh, you you enjoyed it, you know, uh, subscribe to our channel. We can always use more subscribers. Also, leave a comment. You know, we don't get to interact with uh, with people very much. Nobody ever interacts with us, so we definitely would welcome comments. So uh, let us know if there's something you would like to know about. You know, then uh, let us let us know. Now we got this machine. I'm gonna let you see how it works before we end the video. Pretty neat thing. You can. Uh, Add your fertilizer in your uh, in your your line pretty easy. Boom, take it on in there. Go down, just like that. And now that box is done. That quick. And we're gonna get the water hose. I'm gonna get the water hose and uh and get to uh, wetting this down. But first, if you made it to the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you thank you for watching. Uh, as you see, the whole time we did the video, I was doing this planning, and it's a 30-minute video. So you see how, about how much time this would take to plant, and you get an idea of what a day's work would be out here on a farm. Uh, I was glad my wife came out here and, uh, and shot this video because it was a very good work day. It's been a long work day. I've got a lot of work done, and there's so much more that uh, we can show you guys, but it's going to have to be on another video. So... With that being said, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Top Farms, holding it we down. We holding it down. <laughs>